ഡയബറ്റിക് കീറ്റോ അസിഡോസിസ് ഡയബറ്റിക് കീറ്റോ അസിഡോസിസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ കോംപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഡയബറ്റിസ് മെലിറ്റസ് ദ ഡയബറ്റിക് കീറ്റോ അസിഡോസിസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കോസ്ഡ് ബൈ ആബ്സെൻസ് ഓർ മാർക്ഡ്ലി ഇനാഡിക്വേറ്റ് എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് ഇൻസുലിൻ this resulting in disorders in the metabolism of carbohydrate protein and fat in normal adults the metabolism will be different we can see that here in healthy man when there is glucose cells the insulin is produced based on the glucose molecule and it will the insulin that will helps to move the glucose into the cell but in case of diabetic patients there will be production of insulin but it is less amount in so that there will be increase glucose molecules and it will not be move into the cells the increase amount of glucose molecules it will not be move into the cell so that's why there will be increase amount of blood glucose level in the diabetic patient so it is not treated well what happens is it leads to complication so that when we are assessing the blood glucose level it is more than 500 and above so that leads to diabetic ketoacidosis the harmful effect of glucose level in blood stream that leads to production of ketone bodies due to the alteration in the metabolism of carbohydrate protein and fat so that's why there will be ketone bodies in the blood and that leads to diabetic ketoacidosis the clinical features or signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis it includes high blood sugar level that is more than 500 then extreme thirst there will be extreme thirst that is polydipsia extreme thirst otherwise known as polydipsia this patient will uh, show the signs and symptoms of extreme thirst that is polydipsia and there will be signs and symptoms of nausea and vomiting then increased urination that is polyuria increased urination that is known as the polyuria then kusmols respiration kusmols respiration that represent the body attempt to decrease acidosis and counteracting the effect of ketone build up so usually in ketoacidosis the name itself indicates that there will be ketone bodies in the our uh, urine especially in the when we are assessing the urine there will be urine acetone will be positive here so in order to remove the ketone bodies uh, there will be very deep and not labored respiration will be present the hyperventilatory effect so that is known as the kusmol respiration and that will decrease the acidosis then altered mental status there will be altered mental status then fruity smelling in the breath that is acetone odor Uh, fruity smelling in the breath the person uh, when we are uh, standing in front of the patient we can feel the smell of fruity odor or the acetone breath then abdominal pain will be present then high ketone levels in urine that i already told when we are assessing the urine level there will be acetone positive then excessive exhaustion will be present for the patient so these all are the clinical features that can be seen in 
diabetic ketoacidosis and when we are assessing the mental status already we are say uh, we are said that there will be altered mental status sometimes the person will be alert sometimes it uh, the person will be lethargic or comatose based on the patient uh, blood sugar level okay so this is all are the diabetic ketoacidosis features and here the presence of urine ketone bodies and the uh, acetone acetone breath and kusmol's respiration that is very important point and polydipsia and polyuria is the other main features of diabetic ketoacidosis in order to diagnose diabetic ketoacidosis we have to follow some criteria the first one there will be elevated serum glucose level that is more than 250 mg per dl actually it is uh, between 300 to 800 mg per dl okay so it will it should be more than 250 okay and uh, most cases it is above 500 then elevated serum ketone level when we are checking the uh, ketone level serum ketone level also it will be elevated but usually we are assessing the urine ketone bodies that is the easiest method in order to assess the uh, ke diabetic ketoacidosis so we have to check the ketone levels next one when we are assessing abg arterial blood gas analysis the ph will be less than 7.3 that indicate acidosis mostly diabetic ketoacidosis patient the person will be suffering from metabolic acidosis that's why ph will be less than 7.3 and serum bicarbonate level that is less than 18 me colon per liter so here serum bicarbonate level also it will be decreased along with that we can assess the hba1c value okay some patients they will have a severe electrolyte loss so that's why there will be sodium and potassium level will be change changed markedly so we have to correct the sodium potassium levels so that's why we have to assess the sodium potassium levels and along with that we have to check the elevated levels of creatine blood urea nitrogen hemoglobin hematocrit along with the dehydration or signs and symptoms okay then uh, we have to collect the history of the patient features of diabetic ketoacidosis all these things we have to carefully monitor while assessing the diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis the management of diabetic ketoacidosis include we have to monitor airway breathing circulation glucose levels then ketone levels hourly then administer intravenous fluid in order to reduce the dehydration firstly what we have to give is intravenous fluids that is 2 to 3 liter of 0.9% ns over 1 to 3 hours so rapid infusion of 0.9% ns is very important here most of the patient will have decreased sodium so that's why we are administering sodium then step down to 0.45 percentage of ns at 250 to 500 ml per hour when the blood glucose level is 250 mg per dl so when the blood glucose level is decreased we have to give the 0.45 percent that is half strength sodium chloride then add 5 percent glucose to half strength ns at 150 to 250 ml per hour so we can give firstly the normoxylen then half strength normoxylen then we have to give the dns or 5 percentage glucose then in the half strength ns so uh, that is based on the uh, one uh, amount of glucose in the blood
then we have to monitor the serum potassium levels if the serum potassium level less than 3.5 m equivalent per liter we have to give potassium 40 to 80 m equivalent per hour in case of normal level of potassium that is 3.5 to 5 m equivalent per liter give potassium at 10 m equivalent per liter so if it is normal level also we have to give uh, some amount of potassium because when we are correcting the acidosis there may be uh, chance to decrease the potassium again. So that's why when we, uh, when the potassium normal itself we have to give the uh, small amount of potassium. Then administer short acting regular insulin that is very important we have to give short acting regular insulin that is a human extrapid. Uh, here we are giving the human actrapid that is 0.1 units per kilogram IV bolus based on 0.1 units per kilogram IV bolus based on the weight of the patient we are giving the insulin. Then, uh, the, then uh, when the blood glucose level 150 to 250 mg per dl we, we will give the 0.05 to 1 unit kilogram per hour iv infusion when a patient is when patient starts to eat we are giving 2 to 4 hour overlap in insulin infusion and long acting insulin also we will give so most of the time when the patient is in diabetic is ketoacidosis we are giving the uh, IV fluids first then we are giving the glucose sorry insulin based on the weight of the patient it will be given hourly or within the infusion itself we will give otherwise IV bolus also we are giving the insulin then uh, we are hourly checking the blood glucose level based on that we will change the insulin dose uh, then we will give the uh, intermittent insulin also so this is the main uh, management of diabetic ketoacidosis the point you have to remember in diabetic ketoacidosis is the glucose level will be 300 to 500 or sometimes it will may go to 800 mg per dl that is increased level then ph that will be 7.3 less than 7.3 that indicate acidosis then ketone bodies will be positive that's why it is ketoacidosis then total co2 level will be decreased then sodium also will be decreased potassium may increased and potassium will gradually it will decrease sodium will be increase uh, decreased due to dehydration there will be anion gap will be increased and HCO3 level that is bicarbonate level will be decreased and another important clinical feature you have to remember is polydipsia polyuria fruity breath then kusmul's respiration and there will be alteration in the mental status of the patient along with nausea and vomiting then important management uh, that you have to remember that is airway breathing circulation you have to check then uh, hourly diabetes uh, diabetic value and electrolyte and ph value you have to assess then fluid replacement is the best management for diabetic ketoacidosis hourly glucose you have to monitor and hba1c level that is uh, you have to assess the uh, uh, glucose control of that patient that's why we you have to check the hba1c level then fixed rate of insulin you have to give uh, for a period of time then again you have to check the glucose level rapidly we can't decrease the insulin uh, sorry glucose level other uh, that may leads to complications then hourly ketones also you have to assess then if we if we can't control the case you, you can refer the patient to further center so mostly here the main management is to increase the circulatory volume in order to prevent dehydration that's why we are giving the first management 0.9 percent sodium chloride then 
based on the uh, patient uh, blood glucose level we will move on to the half strength sodium chloride then uh, we will give the insulin that is uh, starts with the weight of the patient based on the weight of the patient and then in between we will assess the uh, sodium and potassium levels and uh, uh, if the sodium is uh, sorry if the potassium is decreased we have to give the potassium and uh, if the potassium is normal also we have to give a small amount of potassium then we have to continue the fluid replacement and sometimes we need the 5% dextrose along with the in insulin infusion in order to avoid the uh, immediate loss of glucose then uh, we have to continu continuously monitor the patient that is the management of diabetic ketoacidosis and it is very important in our daily clinical settings you will definitely see uh, this patient and if we manage correctly it will subside soon thank you